folks time come out from around that country okay i said i would make this video and so here it is it's going to be a long-winded video but this is pretty much my journey of building my fishing kayak and everything that i tried backed off tried something else backed off probably wasted a lot of money and now i think i finally got what i need i'm i'm there i figured it out maybe a few more perks but then also building my kayak trailer as well so here we go first off Minn Kota power drive motor. This doesn't need any explanation. It's got uh, eye pilot with that spot lock. Don't need an anchor. Absolutely love it. I thought at the beginning, do I need to have the spot lock and I wasn't going to spend the money and then this came on sale. Now the only difference is the shaft is longer than a normal kayak because I did get a crazy deal. It was 800 bucks cheaper um, than the standard Minn Kota, I don't even know what the shaft length is, 30 inch or whatever, on the one that's made for a kayak. So there's that. The only difference is it does stick up a little high if I want to run this shallow when I'm trying to cast, and that will, I just have to be cognizant that I don't catch it. So there's that. Now, come back here. I, I normally wouldn't have this casting bar. I didn't use it all last year. I just got it this year. And the only reason I got it was because I, it was on sale at sale.ca, S A I L which is a Canadian version of uh, Bass Pro Cabela's type deal for 75 bucks Canadian dollars. So I couldn't pass it up. Uh, so I bought it, put it on. It's actually pretty good. If I'm, I'm standing up, I stand up a lot to fish and I can just lean against it. Now, the beauty of what that was is I had these LED lights hanging around. So I thought, hey, I also duck hunt out of this in some swamps and some marshes. So why not mount some massive LED lights to her? And so we did that, and then I have a gun rest too, which also doubles as a uh, fishing pole holder. When I just want to set it down and retie or whatever I got to do, I can lean it against that. So it's pretty cool. Um, it does drop down, so if you flip these down and that, it slides back down and will stay in the down out of the way position, and then pop it back up, and put it up for the this video. So there's the the gun holder. So I installed these tracks. Um, both sides just in case I want to move my fish finder from one side to the other and I've got enough cable to do that um, I run the yak attack switch blade for my transducer mount and then a, a Garmin 75 uh, Echo 75 SV for my fish finder so it's got side scan and down imaging and uh, really I don't even know if I use it to the full extent of that but it's GPS is is killer for me so when I'm on all these lakes up north here in, in Ontario that wind in and out of cottage country and I, I get lost. I don't have to pull my phone out for GPS. It will guide me back to where I gotta go. Cup holder, absolute, love it. Uh, if my, I have a, a, a thermos that fits perfectly in there, keeps cold, cold water, cold all day long. Uh, bought at Costco and it actually fits perfectly in there. Uh, I could probably show that in another time. And then paddle holder. So these are the paddle holders for my new canoe, but they, when the water, when I get going with the, the trolling motor, I don't ever plan on using this. Maybe just when I launch or when I'm coming back in, if it's shallow. Um, so I don't ever plan on using my paddle, but when it's in here, if I'm rolling with my trolling motor, then it will sometimes catch the water. So, and I wanted something that I could easily pull my motor up and grab it without having to fiddle with this rubber piece here. So that's why I got this and yeah yak attack it's it's really handy so it goes in there and then it locks down with these so it can't pop out and i installed a yak attack uh track to hold it and the seat comes with it now here's the key that my family makes fun of me for because i say i'm now a minimalist and so I, the new canoe suit 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 the new canoe seat i i installed these i ripped these off of my um milk crate which i guess every kayak angler has to build it's like the rite of passage so I, I i ripped these posts off it i had that so that's what i used to use right there i had six pole holders on it i pulled two off because i don't use that anymore because this is where i say i'm a minimalist i wanted to be able to do a full swivel a full 360 turn in my seat which is the beauty of why i bought the new canoe and and not spent the money on a hobie or something is duck hunting and stuff i love the open deck I love being able to stand up. It's so stable. I can walk up and down it. I love the fact I could spin around at will and do whatever I got to do. Spin around, switch uh, switch a rod without having to lean over my seat. So I like that fact. The problem with the if I put that pack here with my battery back here, then I have no room to spin. And the reason I'm so far back in the track with my seat is to offset the weight of the motor so that I can be more stable on the water, more uh, leveled out 
on the water so that so I'm not super front end heavy. So I did put these, a fishing pole will go in here. Now it can be a bit of a pain when you're fishing if you have an extra pole in there because when you're casting, obviously it's right in your way of casting possibly depending on how you're casting. So you gotta be cognizant of it. But I will put it in there to tie off, tie on, whatever, move my net back and forth. My net seems to, to work in there. And I don't catch my net, believe it or not, when it's sitting in there and I'm fishing. So however I cast, I've not, not figured that out. Here's my anchor. So I just bought a cheap, I don't even know, Amazon, super cheap uh, clothesline holder. There was a guy on YouTube that showed you how to do this. I replaced the wire that was in there with paracord and then I just buckled it on so I can quickly pop it on and off. And I don't even use this anymore. I used it all last year, 10 pound weight. Uh, it doesn't always necessarily hold you. I probably recommend, I, I do have an actual anchor that, that flares out, but this is weedless pretty much. It doesn't, it, it's a lot easier to clean and when you're pulling it in. And I used to have a, a, a pulley too. I took that off because I don't use it now that I have the Minn Kota with spot lock. So that's the other kicker there. Here you got my catch board, which is it. I just tied it off to the same ring. So I have, full disclosure, I have lost a catch board in the St. Lawrence River. And I could see it down like 15 feet of water. And I just was not going in to get it. So there it lay. If anybody wants it, I can probably give you GPS coordinates. It may have moved by now. St. Lawrence moves a little bit. but So now I tied it off on the same. But I just slide it down, boom, out from under my seat use it, slide it back under, it's out of my way. Now, carrying on with the minimalist, I do need to have a battery back here. So I got a hundred amp in here and I needed to have fishing pole holders still. So that's why when I take this out, I lose my fishing pole holders. So I, I bought these on Amazon, the Scotty mount, and they can, you can click these off and disconnect. But why I bought these was you can attach this in any one of these so that I could offset it. And therefore, when I mounted these on the side, because they would not fit here in the middle of this battery box, I had to mount them on the side. And then these are just so that it, they don't vibrate and really probably useless. They, they, I don't even notice them anyway, so I could probably take them off, but reusable zip ties. Um, but yeah, so I could mount them on the sides and then they hold my six poles. I'm good. I now fish with nine poles, so I'm trying to figure out how to get three more or two more pole holders. I do have this guy here. Um, Got to be cognizant though that you don't catch it. I had an, another battery box. So full disclosure, I have a 100 amp hour battery in here. I got a buddy that, uh, that I know, uh, an acquaintance that runs a, a battery store and told me not to use the lithium chargers with a lithium battery because they will take that battery to 100%. And anybody that is in that industry knows if you take a lithium 100%, it starts to limit the ability of that battery to hold 100% charge and it gets weakened and weakened. Hence your phones now, Android has a battery protection option where it will only charge it to 85%. So I believe there's some truth to that. So I, I use an old school standard car battery charger on it so it doesn't take it to 100. So I will tell you, I launch at five, quarter after five, 20 after five uh, in the morning and at two o'clock it dies. And so I got an hour left in, in most tournaments that I fish, go till three o'clock. So I have an hour left where I got to paddle. I don't ever plan on paddling. That's why I built this and the money I spent. So I then grabbed a battery box. I had two battery boxes right now, but I had an amp hour in the bottom and an 80 amp hour in the top. I bolted the one battery box to the top of the battery box and I had those fishing pole holders on. First kick at the camp. Change that and I'll show you. I wire batteries in series. So I then, I have wired all of the new canoe with these little plugs now, and there's probably, there, there are guys tell me there's better plugs. These ones do the trick, I have no issues with it. So I got that and I, I have this wired up, plug that in and it runs up to the front in that side that hatch and I'll show you that in a minute. Because now I run an 80 amp hour with the 100 amp hour. So I had the 80 amp hour and then about 100 amp hour. So both lithium, so they're fairly light. So I run the 80 fits in the hatch perfectly. The, the 100 fits here in this. So I have 180 amp hours for that motor. I don't ever plan on paddling. Wired in series and I'm good to go. So now forward up here, I'll talk about my trailer and these tubes in a minute, but my fish finder. So what I did here was I wired up these plugs on both sides so I can again move my fish finder to either side. That side you'll see has the plug. That's the lights. I just plug it in. Boom. Lights are on. Now the handy part about this is my truck has that very it's like ricky bobby that has the sponsorship on his windshield and he's like it's very 
uh, <laughs> he, he does love whatever, but it's very inconvenient to have it there. This is fine. I can see through it until it's dark. At dark, that sucks. We'll pull into a boat launch at five and, and it's freaking dark and a lot don't have lights. So what I have just figured out is the beauty of these right here that I put on is I, I didn't tighten them, but they're, they're tight enough. As you can see, I can move my, my gun mount, but it, it stays where it needs to when I need it to. I can spin these and spin them so they face back. And now I plug that in when I get there in the morning and boom, it is now lit and I can see to back the kayak in the water because I now back it in. I leave it rigged. I'm done with the 45 minutes sweating my butt off at 4.30 in the morning at a dock. I'll get to there when I talk about the trailer. So there's that, um, the hatch. I'll open that up and I'll show you what I've done there. So I have installed extra because I took the bag out. So the bag had an extra seal that you would say here. So I bought this stuff off Amazon and uh, just cut, it just cuts to fit as you can see. And so that's where I, I, I put that on there. This is this rubber mount here is standard that comes around, comes with the new canoe. So I put that on just so it's extra. So there's the 80 amp hour wired up. So you can see I have that side wired in here as well, but I can quickly switch it. Um, I have quick connects inside there because I don't want my fish finder when I plug it into one of these sides running off of here. So way up in here, I have another 20 amp hour lithium battery that I run off my fish finder. They say, I never tried it. I just, like I said, I know a guy with uh, fairly inexpensive batteries. So I thought, and they say you get interference running your fish finder off your same battery setup that you have for your trolling motor when you get rocking and rolling. I never tried it. I just didn't bother because I could fit a 20 amp hour up in there and I have quick clip connects on it and I just throw it in, plug it on, we're good to go. So that's what I do. So that's pretty much my kayak for fishing and how I've set it up. And I, like I said, I've gone through the whole thing with the kayak, with the, the pack, the milk crate and everything else. The only thing I might add is I've seen a guy went to Walmart and bought like a, a plastic shelf that fit right under his seat versus buying the ones that are made directly for it. And it looked like it worked good. It's like 10 bucks. So I think I'm gonna do that next. So now I just finished my trailer and I've been waiting to make this video to show my trailer. So I will now show the trailer because like I said, I'm so done. Guys with the Hobies and they got the carts that go up through the scupper holes and they say with the new canoes, if you do that, they have had some cracking in the scupper holes. So I do have a, a sea tug and the sea tug you can mount PVC pipe along it so it will fit up inside kind of like the wilderness and and works good and it does it, it works fine but I, I I lift a little bit bro and uh, still you leave this thing rigged so I rig it up my truck and I got a hundred yard jaunt to, to launch it I can't with the with the motor the batteries my tackle everything on this thing is absolutely oh, my tackle let me show you that before we get to the trailer but everything is so heavy that i can't so i'm like screw it i'm i'm building a trailer that i can back this thing into the water so my tackle it's a mess right now because I, I haven't sorted it since the last tournament and i got another one this weekend so i will found this lunker hunt was on sale that same place sale that i bought the uh the bar the stand-up bar for 75 i think this was on sale for like 45 and it's the big lunker hunt like i said i gotta sort i just throw things in, in grocery in plastic bags when i when I rip them off and then I know, okay, those got to be sorted back into my packs. So I, it, it comes with these large lunker hunt tackle packs. So I got hooks and then I got hard bodies in there. I got uh, jigs in one and, and then top water in another. And then down in here, I got a spinner pack. So I got about 30, 40 spinners in there. This is my, my flag. I do run that uh, with a light because when off, off at five in the morning, there isn't any. And then in the ends, I can do uh, swim jigs and stuff. And then in this end is all my soft plastics up in here. And then I have a separate pack for that I use for my uh, wacky worms because if you're doing bass tournaments, I mean, wacky worms deserve their own. So there's my wacky worm pack that I use in, in that. And my boating license that you got to have because I have a motor on the darn thing. So that is that is up at the front like instead of putting it behind because like i said i want to be able to swivel it goes, it goes right up in here just nicely and it fits there and it's it's great i can slide it back take what i need and then i just push it back forward we're good to go so all that said let's get back to the trailer so yeah i say that i am going to continue to to try to horse this thing down it literally after 30 minutes of putting it together 40 minutes of putting all the batteries in and getting my tackle in it and getting my net and my poles ready and and everything and mounting the motor because the motor wasn't on it because it was in the back of my truck 
So I pull it out and I got to mount the motor and all that jazz and then try to drag it down with that C tug. Uh, I, I pick it up and I do 10 quick shuffle steps and then have to set it down and it weighs that much. And like I said, throw, I lift a little and it's still, oh my gosh, I work it out, make sure you're only good at working out anyway. But so that was a pain. I said, that's it, I'm done. I, I was going to sell this. I had this trailer for a golf cart that I had sold. And I was gonna sell this trailer and then and buy just like a Sea Dew trailer or, or like a Malone or something like that. And then I seen guys were using these trailers because the rocks with the flatbed on it, they're, 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 it's less rocks coming up bouncing off the bottom of your kayak, or it's not like a tinner boat where it can take that. So I thought, hey, I have one of those sitting on my front lawn for sale. I'm just gonna convert it. So I actually, the, the most expensive thing is PVC pipe nowadays. It's absolutely ridiculous. So I, I happen to find this, yeah, I don't even know what type of pipe it's called, but it's it, 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 it's got holes in it for irrigation or whatever, and who cares? It is what it is. So I actually used I bought it, and that's what you got right there. I lined it all the way down, the measured and fit the nice contour of my kayak. And so four inch pipe, and then I carpeted it, and, or it's three inch pipe, sorry, and I carpeted it, it carpeted it, and then, uh, which was the hardest part, I'll tell you, that's not fun to do, but, and to make it so it gets good. Probably take this roller off. I was thinking I needed to stop, is when I use my, because I, I, I put a winch on it with a wireless winch, which on Amazon for like 150 bucks, you can't go wrong. So I thought I needed something to stop it from coming forward. I don't, and it's just really putting stress where it shouldn't have stress on the kayak it should just sit in those tubes so that's coming off yeah, that's my next venture um but yeah so wireless i was gonna wire it i originally bought everything on amazon to uh, wire it to my truck so i could just come through a harness and plug right in and i thought wait a minute if i use this trailer for anything else because i can still use it for a four-wheeler and such i won't have a winch to be able to work because if we use or if we use somebody else's truck they're not going to have the wiring for it so instead i just had this old box that i used to use for lunches when i go hunting and so I just, I've, right now it's just jammed because the battery that's in there is a little guy. And so I've, I, I jammed it with cardboard so the battery won't bounce around a whole lot. I gotta fix that up a little bit, but all the wires run into it, I bolted it down. So it's there, here's the switch for the winch up here. And then I have the actual wireless remote. And I didn't think I needed a wireless. I just thought, I had another winch, but I, I seen this pretty cheap on Amazon. And need a wireless one, let me tell you, if you are gonna winch, you need a wireless one. So before I go down to pull it out, I'll, I'll come up and I'll put it in the weeds like everybody else. And then you go back and you get your seat tug and then you got to drag it out. Well, I leave it in the weeds. I'll go get my truck. I back down. Well, while I go get my truck. I'll pull the winch all the way out already. So it's at the back. I'll wrap it around this is, which it, it takes the weight. It, and and I, I'm right there with it. So I'm not up at the front when it's back there. So I just, I can baby it with one hand and hit the button with the other and it pulls right up on the trailer and then the winch just pulls it up. I do nothing. And push a button and watch it pull up the up the trailer and it, and it works great. So yeah, winch, I, I'm, I love it. So there was that. Um, it had, when it was a golf cart trailer, we just moved to the side. That I put my battery chargers and, and crap like that in it. Um, when I travel, I will take my anchor and my catch board so they're not bouncing around in my kayak. And I put them in there. I leave them rigged up. I leave them tied on. They'll fit in there. The rope just hangs over. Good to go. And then this, uh, which my wife thinks is absolutely stupid and overkill because you can put your poles in the back of your truck. But let me tell you something. These poles, I was, I seen it and I thought that's just a cool thing to put on the trailer. And so it, trying to find six, and this is six inch PVC and I wanted eight inch because I want all my rods in one. And I thought, well, if I can find six inch maybe, but eight inch, they wanted uh, 300 bucks for a 12 foot length or a 10 foot length. And I'm like, no way. So six inch was the same. So I was, I was given up on the dream of having these tubes because then these carrier caps, this kit on Amazon for six inch is 125 bucks just for these steel end caps that open and close and you can lock them. And I thought, man, that, that, I might as well buy a Yakima rod holder or something that's like 1100 bucks and, and mount that. So forget it. I'll put my rods in my truck. And the one piece is just a pain because they, if you got to put them in your truck when you're staying at a motel or something at night or it, it, you don't want to leave them in the back, you got to take them in your hotel room. So I was just, it, it is what it is. But then I found a whole rack from the top of a van, a plumbing van that had two, these were white tube giant 12 foot length, six inch tubes on it. And so I offered the guy hundred bucks. He said, come get it. I threw him on the front lawn and you can see my neighbors think that we probably do witchcraft at night. Cause I was out here one night painting them 
and so now you can see the black on my lawn but painted them up flat black to match the trailer painted it all flat black and and uh yeah so i can actually fit because they're 12 12 feet long and people would say that's overkill you only need 10 and it's true you only need eight if you're if your longest one piece is eight but i want to leave my rod my reels on them obviously and just store them in there i can fit six rigged rods with the reels on them rigged up per tube because they're so long they can stagger and i've not had a problem where i can't reach the rod i mean that's a four foot arm length reach but it, usually they're not all the way back in the end and i haven't had a problem yet where i can't get them out so i could fit six fully rigged rods per tube uh reels on them and, and the whole nine yards so yeah i i'm actually pretty pumped about that so that's pretty much it my only other awesome find i didn't know I, I feel so embarrassed i didn't know they made these some of my buddies are like you didn't know they had these is these ratchet straps that i highly recommend i have fought with ratchet straps you can look at the back of my truck up there there's the mess so these ratchet straps are beautiful and i use them i use it to hold in my battery box because i travel down the highway with this battery box in here and like it is rock solid doesn't move so the beauty of these is they're ratchetable like you don't have the strap the tail hanging or anything like that you just push this button and it releases and then you push it and it retracts up it takes up that slack so when even when you're done with them you take them off so these ones here when i actually launch i'll just take it off and then they just suck it suck themselves up and they're just small and store away you don't have a mess where you gotta untangle like in the back of my truck and then you push the button it sucks up enough and then you just give it a couple clicks and tighten her down the only other thing is the stickers. I was told uh, I won a sticker pack at a tournament. I was told to make a kayak go fast. So I will say that I was I was averaging about 3.2 mile an hour topped out with that 55 pound Minn Kota. And the last stickers on, I was rolling about 3.5 mile per hour. So I picked up about 0.3 with those stickers on there. I just made them that much quicker. So that's it in a nutshell. Said I'd make the video, throw it up on Redneck Country, and uh, there you go. I'm pretty pumped, ready to rock this weekend. Bassmaster Class Championship or Bassmaster's Kayak Championship, whatever it's called. So, wish me luck, folks. I don't believe in luck. Wish me finding fish and talent. <laughs> I could always use a lot of that.